Welcome to the installation and operating procedures for a UFS TruFlux UF system. While certain characteristics may differ from one system to the next, this video will be used as a visual aid to properly show how qualified personnel may conduct a safe and proper installation. Before any procedures can begin, it is important to adhere to all safety procedures and regulations mandated by your company. Should you need assistance with any procedures, please refer to all warning, safety, and installation instructions found in the operational manual and checklist guide for this system. Your UF machine has been assembled and tested. It was then match marked prior to disassembly for packing, crating, and shipment. A list of minimum system requirements by UFS, as well as the equipment by others, can be found in the operational manual supplied with this unit. The TruFlux system will typically be shipped in one or more crates based upon the overall length of the skid and any special customer requirements for handling at the job site. The UF elements are always shipped loose and are typically in cardboard boxes. These boxes are placed on a wood skid and then shrink wrapped or placed on a separate wood skid. Carefully move the crates and shipping skids as close to the final resting place as possible. Begin to remove the plywood skirting that surrounds the lower portion of the wood crate assembly. Remove the plastic sheeting that covered the upper portion of the assembly. Use scissors to cut the beige, clear, or white-colored nylon tie wraps. Take care not to cut anything else when performing this step. Match marks are used to identify the pieces that need to be reassembled. These are typically black letters or letters with a number on a yellow label. Set aside any loose PVC piping that may have been attached to the frame to protect it during shipment in a clean and safe working environment. Use a 9 16 inch socket to remove the lag screws that secure the metal skids to the 4x4 wood skids. Note there are rubber isolators between the mounting points on the skids. Throw these away as the UF machine is not meant to be mounted on rubber isolators. Do not remove any protective tape applied to fluid parts until you are ready to make various connections. When you are ready, take care when removing any protective tape to avoid losing any O-rings that may be pushed into a gland cavity. Check your field assembly drawing to see what your UF machine is to look like and place the assemblies in their approximate location. If your TruFlux system came in two skids, Groove clamps require a gasket to cover the pipe joint. It is important to make sure the appropriate gasket is already in place before the two skids are moved together. If you do not place the gasket in first, you will have to move the skids apart in order to place the gasket in its proper location. If your UF machine is large enough and requires that it be split for shipment or movement in your plant, or if you ordered a CIP system or other options, then you will have to locate the individual skids as required. The ideal location should have adequate space of 150 centimeters or 60 inches on each of the sides of the UF machine for maintenance. Check to make sure there is adequate headroom of 1.5 meters or 5 feet above the top cap for removal of the UF elements from the UF module. Place the A UF rack, usually with ED paint connection flanges, in its proper location. Next, if your UF rack was made in two parts, place B UF rack next to unit A and ensure the appropriate match marks are lined up and each pipe joint that requires a groove clamp already has the groove clamp gasket that can be slid into place. It is extremely important to not proceed with the assembly of any of the loose items until the unit or units have been put into place and leveled. Use large C-clamps where UF Rack Unit A and UF Rack Unit B are joined, and also where UF Rack Unit B and the CIP unit are spaced apart by the width of the wood spacers. 
Start the leveling process at the highest corner by running a bubble level completely around the C-channel frame perimeter of the UF machine and CIP. Add shims as required at one of the adjacent corners to the high corner. Move to the next corner and shim as required. Continue until you are back at the high corner again. Double check completely around and on the top flange of the 8 cm or 3 inch C channel with the bubble level. Readjust the shims as required. Use a concrete drill bit to drill a 7 cm or 3 inch deep hole at each of the corners of each skid. If the floor is steel, create a weld bead every two feet or so, or as required, once all the shims are in place. Also, weld the shims so they cannot be removed. Insert a 12.7 mm or half inch diameter concrete floor anchor into each drilled hole. Place the washer over the top threaded portion of the anchor. Then, attach the nut. Use an appropriate socket to tighten as required to secure the skids to the concrete floor. Make sure the shims are still in place and the skids are all level. Secure the shims permanently so they will not come loose or can be removed. Adjustment and misalignment of piping, pre-filter vessels, the UF housing, and other connections may occur during installation of the machine. Refer to the Getting Started UF manual at all times to carefully adjust all necessary connections. Be sure to properly tighten the groove clamp hardware. Tighten bolts alternately and equally, maintaining metal-to-metal -metal contact at the bolt pads and tighten securely. Excessive tightening is not necessary. Uneven tightening may cause a gasket to pinch. Lubricate the outside gasket with glycerin to avoid pinching. If some of the inlet and outlet piping to the UF modules and PF vessels are not level, or the PF or UF housing are not vertical or true, adjustment is needed to be level. The goal is to have the inlet piping to the UF module outlet piping from the UF manifold and the ED paint manifold level and square to each other. If not done properly, it is likely that a leak will occur. As stated before, some loose sub-assemblies came with your machine. Ensure all O-rings are firmly in place and have not fallen off or been lost. Replace any O-rings that are missing. Some items have to be installed once the UF system has been set in place and secured to the floor. Remove any packaging or tape used to keep a connection point free of dust or dirt. Locate the gear-operated butterfly valves for both True Velocity ED paint manifolds. Install one of these on each of the paint manifolds. Position the valve indicator arrow so that it can be read without the use of a stepladder or getting on your knees. Follow proper bolt tightening procedures to make sure the bolts are all tightened evenly at the same time. Locate the permeate discharge ball valve. Install it so the lever can be opened and closed with no interference. Follow proper bolt tightening procedures to make sure the bolts are all tightened evenly at the same time. If you have a ball valve, locate the valve and screw it onto the end of the permeate manifold. Locate the integral true velocity manifold bypass assembly and secure with two by one and a half inch groove clamps. Locate the permeate discharge flow meter piping assembly for each UF module. Make sure the O-rings are installed as required. Use your hand to tighten the union on the bottom side of the flow meter assembly. If you use a tool, you can break this flow meter. Repeat these steps for each UF module. Locate the cleaning supply line piping and attach the piping to the supply pipe on the UF rack. Attach the piping to the filter vessel on the CIP.
locate the clean return and discharge three quarter inch piping. Install the Vitalik one and a half inch clamp. Install the 90 degree pipe to the end of the clean return. Place the one and a half inch clamp to hold it in place and level. Locate the permeate clean return and discharge to drain piping. And attach the one half inch union and secure. Then attach the half inch union to the discharge side. Attach the half inch 90 degree piping to the permeate clean return. Locate the CIP permeate fill piping. And attach it to the true union ball valve. Make sure all piping and connections are level. Do not turn the pressure gauges. Contact a UFS representative if the gauges do not point in the proper direction. Refer to the operational manual's valve schematic and open the proper valves as indicated. To begin the CIP checkout procedures, close the CIP panel and secure it. Turn on the motor. The amber light should be illuminated, indicating power is supplied to the CIP control panel. If not, check the connections at the transformer and the green light. The pump motor was previously tested. Add hot water, greater than 50 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, to the filter vessel to cover the temperature sensor. The red lamp should light up indicating the high temperature limit has been tripped. Place a thermometer in the vessel and record the temperature when the red lamp goes off. 